a bunch of other genres that exist within the Kipora of Hinduistan and classical music. Um, and today the talk focuses on the Drupad genre, so I'm not going to get into that as that is the purpose of the talk. Um, and as Dr. Murphy said, we do have um, a conference happening um, this Saturday, which aims to be interdisciplinary in its approach, which means that we have scholars, we have musicians, we have dancers, all coming together in a dialogue about Indian classical performing arts. Um, so if you would like more information about that, we do have that there to the side. Um, other than that, I will leave it to Guruji and Kishan to get started. Thank you. Thank you. Also to uh, Green College, CSAR, ICMSV, and of course Akhil, um, Ashta Alliance um, for inviting us to participate in uh, the events this weekend. Um, I want to say two things to start with. First of all, this is a very daunting audience to speak to. I know that there are very learned musicians and scholars sitting in the front row, so I'm sweating bullets. <laughs> um, the second thing that I want to say is that I have roughly, I guess, an hour and plus change to talk about Drupad, which is kind of impossible. <laughs> it's such a large subject that one spends an entire lifetime studying it. And I'm going to try and share a few of my thoughts. I'm going to try and distill what I feel is really important about this art form that I love and practice uh, and put it in front of you for, you, for your consideration. Um, before I delve into uh, the subject itself, there's something that I want to say which might be slightly, not controversial, but uh, debatable. And what I would say is that whereas in Western cultures, um, validation is derived from uh, innovation and sort of looking ahead. Um, especially with regard to Indian music, I can't make this claim with regard to Indian culture, but with regard to Indian music, validation is sort of antiquity. So that the older things are, the more valid they seem to us. And in fact, we're going to be talking about the oldest existing text of uh, dramaturgy in the next couple of days. Um, with regard to Drupal, uh, when you listen, when you talk to practitioners of the art, they often like to say that this is an extremely old art form, it derives from the Samvid, and um, you know, how ancient it is. Well, the, the thing is that if you talk to most practitioners, they're not able to really trace back to the Samvid. There's just kind of a notion that it comes from the Samvid. But truly speaking, if you look at Hindustani music as a construct, as a larger construct, the newest subgenre of the form, Thumri, dates from the 19th century. It was innovated essentially in the court of Nawab Bhojit Ali Shah in Lucknow. If you look at the most popular form of vocal music, which is Khayal, it sort of dates from the reign of Muhammad Shah Ramila, 18th century. If you look at the form of Drupal, it is said to sort of have taken form in the court of Rajaman Singh Tumar, and then <coughs> modified in texts in the 16th century. So what you see is a record of innovation, right? 16th century, roughly 200 years later, another form of music being formed. Another 200, 150 years, another form of music being formed. And then if you go back from the book, you see Prabandhadan in the 13th century being codified by Sharangadeva and his Sangeet Ratnaka. So there's a progression that's happening here. And although we seek validation in antiquity, what drives Indian music forward is innovation. So, what I would say is that what I'll present to you are my thoughts about the most ancient form of Indian music. But really what I'm presenting to you is how we perceive Drupad in the present time in the 21st century. I'll, I'll point out one more oddity about this whole thing. That is that it's not till the 20th century 
when there is recorded music available widely, and now in the 21st century with YouTube and other forms of dissemination that are visual, that there's this very strong desire to codify things and say that this is, this is how things are. This is the truth of the matter. But the truth of the matter is that things are much more flexible than this. In fact, even if we look at the recorded, uh, um, the recordings that are available to us from the 20th century, the number of forms of Drupal is very large, right? Uh, there are uh, dharanas associated with uh, not only the Dagarbani, but there is Dharmanga, there is Talwandi, there is Vishnupur, there is Bhitiya, there is Mathura, on and on with many dharanas. And each dharana has a very specific style, there is Agra. Uh, so each style looks unique to me. But somehow when we talk to practitioners of Rupa today, there seems to be kind of a monotone kind of a framework that's useful. Everything sort of traces back to one school. So the dominant school of Drupad today is the Dagarbani. And so when you talk about Drupad, oftentimes that's equated to Dagarbani Drupad. I have studied Dagarbani Drupad. I also studied Drupad in the context of Agra, Agra Dharana. I have come to believe that there are many ways of looking at Drupad. And essential, the essential framework of Drupad is something other than Dagarbani Drupad. So, I want to put this out there before I say anything further. So, what I don't want to present to you is one particular viewpoint from Adharana. What I want to present to you is what I think defines Drupal. Okay? <coughs> so, to start with, I'm just going to sing a very shortened presentation of Drupal. Very short. Um, just to lay out the elements for you. And then, um, so we'll take a 50,000 foot view of this art form, then we'll try to go inside and see how things are built.
I have a very hard time singing while I'm talking. There are two separate pieces of the voice. Right? I just curtailed what I did. I wanted to basically use this as now a platform to discuss what is going on. Okay. So, first of all, you notice that this piece was divided into two parts. The part that he didn't accompany and the part that he did accompany. Right? So, in technical terms, Anibadha and Nibadha. Right? One that is not bound by time and one that is bound by time. Now, before I go into that, uh, let's look at just the Anibadha part. The Anibadha part is roughly called, the larger term for it is Ala. But when I look at Ala, there are three separate sections to Ala. Right? The first section is completely without any sense of time. When I started singing, there's no keeping of time when I'm, when I'm singing this part. But the thing is, despite the best efforts of a human being, because we're bound by time, even the Allah has a pace into it. So there's an acknowledgement from the very beginning of the performance of the Rupert that we're bound by time. Although we're trying in that first phase to show the Raga completely free of time. Right? The second phase of Allah, which in Shastra is called Madhya Allah, colloquially it's called Jod. In instrumental music it's called Jod. In Agra Dharana, it's called Nomto. This is this phase of Allah is an acknowledgement of time. Uh, 
factor of two, right? Eight or sixteen or something like tintal is very common in Khayal. The reason is that in Drupal, a lot of the work that I do in the improvisation section against the composition, it will it will either be doubles or quadruples or triples, sometimes six times the length. So we're looking for a number that is going to be a factor of all of these. So two times two times three works very well. So what did we do here? Ah. show the improvisation one more time a little bit. Here I'm completely free of the tal. It's going. I'm just going to come and read the sound. But there's no insistence on the on the composition itself. Say Here. 
next time the A, there's no I, there's A. Yeah. 
आज रंग भी जनलागे मथुरा नगर के लो वन सेंटेंस राइट सो व्हेन आई एम परफॉर्मिंग दैट दैट शुड बी माय एटॉमिक यूनिट सेकंड आइडिया बना बना खेले भागो राइट मथुरा नगर के लो बना बना खेले भागो सो दोस टू एटॉमिक आइडियाज शुड बी वेरी क्लियर टू आई शुड नेवर वंडर व्हाट दोस आइडियाज आर and then the connection of them together is another aspect of the improvisation so uh